You throw over $1,000 a month into local wishing wells. Of course, you idiot, because I'm wishing for more money. This is the Keeping Your Money Show with Jamie Westenberger and Bart Steindler. All right, welcome back to Keeping Your Money Show. Jamie Westenberger joined, as always, by Bart Steindler. I want to remind you, you can always... Give us a call. Our toll-free number is 888-98-MONEY. That's 888-986-6639. We don't take calls while we're on the air, but we do. Uh, someone does answer the call 24 hours a day. Uh, we'd be happy to call back and talk to you, answer your question. You can also send questions or requests to our email. It's info, I-N-F-O, at keepingyourmoney.com. And I do respond to all of those emails personally, whether it's, you want a second opinion, maybe you need a first opinion, or maybe you have a question that you'd like us to address on the show or something that you've been wondering about, uh, we would be happy to do that as well. Definitely want to tune in next week. Uh, we're going to have Steve Broll on from Broll Tax and Accounting. You know, Steve does a great job of breaking down kind of tax questions that, you know, people may have. If you have one in the meantime, feel free to email me and I'll get it over to him. But, uh, kind of the time of year you really should be thinking about taxes. You know, a lot of times people think about it in March, but really by then, a lot of the things you could have potentially done, it's too late now, you know, right. with the changing tax code and the way deductions are going to be handled and charitable stuff and, you know, Roth uh, conversion limits. And I mean, there's a lot of changes that have been happening. Um, it's not really status quo, you probably want to sit down and really look at what you're doing with your taxes. I mean, it could be thousands of dollars of difference, either in your pocket or Uncle Sam's. You know, a lot of people are going to be uh, listening and watching the football games later today and, and tomorrow. And when Go those blue. when those teams are getting together to play, they just don't show up on game day and, and start to say, okay, we're going we're gonna to have this game. And like a week or two weeks or several weeks in advance, you know, their scouts and coaches are looking at this and, and strategizing on what are we going to do to give us a better advantage of beating this team. Mm -hmm. Well, the same is true with your taxes. If you wait until, um, you know, February or March to start making strategic changes in order to lower your tax payment in April – you may have waited too long. Yeah. So now's the time to do it. Now's the time to start scouting out the other team. Yeah, and, and you know, that may not apply to Nebraska when they played Michigan a couple of weeks ago. I'm pretty sure they didn't plan at all for that game. But uh, that's a that's a little dig on all my Nebraska fans out there. But, okay. <laughs> <laughs> People don't realize, but but you, some of our clients podcast us in other states, and I do have clients in Omaha who are uh, – who are big Nebraska fans who came in for the game and it was an absolute drubbing to the point that it wasn't even fun making fun of them after halftime. So, um, but you're absolutely right, Bart. If you're waiting till after the first of the year, you you in many cases have waited too long. So, all right. Um, so let's talk about this one question, which you know is it's kind of interesting the way this topic was set up because I think it's really it really is pretty um, poignant and. So one of the, they're, they're talking to a professor of retirement planning at the American College, Jamie Hopkins. Great name, by the way. Um, but, um, so uh, Professor Hopkins says, you know, whenever they do surveys, they ask people, how long do you expect to live? And what we see is people underestimate how long they're going to live. And that can be one of the biggest errors you make in your retirement planning. So you might say, well, how does how I answer that question mean? Well, if you're planning to live to be 95 and you die at 86, you will die most likely pretty happy as far as finances go because you plan to live even longer than you did. If you have the attitude of, I'll probably die at 70 because nobody in my family lives very long, at 78, there's a good possibility you're going to be really unhappy because you didn't put the financial vehicles and, and plans in place to take care of yourself as you get older. I have a perfect example of a gentleman I know who is not a healthy person, has not been healthy for a number of years, um, you know, smokes, he probably drinks a little bit too much, and he has told me for a decade that he does not expect to live past 65. Well, he's 66 right now. Now, I'm not his financial advisor, so I do not know what his financial situation is, but I can tell you 
the way he lived his first 10 years of retirement would indicate to me he really expected to not be there right now. And the fact that he still is could potentially make it very, very uncomfortable for him. And, you know, sometimes we think of like illness and we're like, oh, well, you know, everybody in my family dies of heart disease, right? Mm -hmm. But everybody in your family didn't have even remotely the medical technology we have today. The, the advancements we've made in disease control and management, I mean, are unbelievable to the point where there's a lot of things that would have killed you 10, 15 years ago that just really aren't even that big of a concern right now. I was at a um, talk earlier this week, and it was it was about financial trends and that, and they were talking about how the rates of death associated with certain types of cancer have dropped dramatically in mm -hmm. the last 10 years. And, and, and the reason I bring that up is a lot of times when we're talking to people, they say, well, you know, my, my parents both passed away between ages of 75 and 80, so I don't really think I'm going to live much longer than that. But your parents may have a, a much different lifestyle. It could have been the difference in how much they smoked and drank, the difference in how much exercise they got, and then add to that the difference in medical advancements that are around today that were not around when your parents were around. So I think you can't put too much of an emphasis on the fact that, you know, your, your parents live to be a certain age and therefore that's about the age you're going to be living to. It's just not a, it's just not a logical conclusion to come to. Well, and I think the other thing that throws people off sometimes, if you look at life expectancy, life expectancies can sometimes throw off your understanding of what that really means, right? It's mm -hmm. like average income. Well, average income means half of the population makes more, half makes less, right? So when we say life expectancy is 77 years old, the reality is if you live to be 65, you have a very high likelihood of making it well into your 80s because you've kind of already beat the odds of being the half under, right? Because mm -hmm. accidents, cancer, things that happen to younger people diminish, you know, uh, in many regards as you get older. Now, other things come up, heart, you know, strokes, things like that. But a lot of that is really manageable. Like if you think about the most likely way for someone to die when they're younger, say under 50, it's most likely in an accident. Yes. But as you get older, you, you may drive less. You're not working on a job that's potentially harmful or deadly. Um, so a lot of those types of things, ways that you could pass away, diminish. Now it becomes medical. Well, medical advancements have made things like strokes and heart attacks very manageable to the point of, I remember when I was a child, my grandfather had open heart surgery. And I remember it just being this debilitating thing. Like, I mean... I mean, it was horrible and he was laid up for months. And I mean, you know, it was like even after it was over, you wondered if he was going to survive. I mean, it was really, really pretty in invasive, you know. Nowadays, if you have heart surgery, they usually have you up and walking around within one or two days. Right. You know, fast forward 20 years, my dad had open heart surgery and he was like doing heart therapy the next day. You know, I have a client that had open heart surgery uh, last year, emergency. He was almost fully blocked in one of his main arteries, has open heart surgery, fully recovered, working out five days in the gym, looks the picture of health, right? So drastic differences in how medical advances have changed the way that things happen. So you might say, okay, so what, what can I really do about this? Well, what you really want to do is make sure you're really looking at this realistically. If you're planning on taking a significant amount of money out of your savings early on in your retirement, you need to be prepared for what that really means when you're 85 years old. Now, at 85, it's very likely you're not going to be out playing tennis every day, um, you know, but, but you're very likely to potentially still be alive. And there are costs with you being alive, whether you're super active or not. Right, right. And, you know, you, you, have, to, you have to look at a lot of statistics uh, to, to figure these things out. And one of the things I always go back to is every year the number of people that are living into their hundreds grows. Mm-hmm. So as, as a percentage of the whole population, every year that gets bigger. So that's changing the amount of time that you have to think about as far as how many years you're going to have to supply yourself income in retirement. 
The other thing that you have to think about, and this is never a comfortable thing to think about, but when you're planning your ability to survive on your own money without a paycheck, you have to consider um, how long are you going to die? Which sounds like a weird question. Right. But it used to be if you had a heart attack, you probably died. If you had a stroke, your life expectancy was maybe a mere months. Today, you can live with a chronic condition for an extended period of time, including things like Alzheimer's, dementia, um, Parkinson's, you know, things that can be debilitating and expensive, but can last a decade even. I've known several people. Now I'm in my I'm in my uh, early ish earliest 60s right now and I know several people that have lived for 10 years needing constant care mm-hmm. and 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 that is expensive you you um, you know I, I know families today that are spending seven to ten thousand dollars a month to have the care for the people in their family so that they can be comfortable in their older years and they need the help they can't cook their own food they can't bathe themselves and somebody has to pay for that yep and the best way to plan for that is when you're in your 50s and early 60s not when you're 72 and realizing that that might be facing you right you know so just just be realistic your likelihood of living well beyond any age that you probably are thinking of right now is a lot higher than you think it is. And if you're not planning for that, the likelihood of you being in a financial disadvantage late in life really is pretty high. So, all right, coming up, we're going to talk about an upsurge in social security scams, how you can prevent being a victim of one and help those around you as well, right here on the Keeping Your Money Show. There's no one size fits all when it comes to planning your future. Jamie, Bart, and all of the advisors at the Keeping Your Money Show understand that your financial goals are unique and your needs are going to change at varying stages of your life. Our team of advisors can help you tailor a financial plan that meets your unique needs. Call us today at 1-888-98-MONEY or visit keepingyourmoney.com to schedule your free initial consultation. 